Hi, my name is Jason Daniels and I'm a director here at Business Depot. I wanted to talk to you about inventory and how we account for it in your financial statements. So we break down inventory for most of our clients into different categories for different reasons. So the most common category you'll see is goods available for sale. And this is the inventory that you've got sitting on your shelf, sitting in your store, available for a customer to buy today. It could be on your website, they can walk into the store and purchase it and walk out with it. The second most common is goods ordered but not received. So it might be that you order stock from China, the US, Europe, you have to pay an amount upfront, whether that be a deposit or the full amount, and it takes time to get that here. We still have to account for that balance that you've paid. It's not in cost of goods because you haven't sold it. So it has to sit on the balance sheet as either a deposit paid or goods ordered not received. So most commonly we put that in goods ordered not received until you physically receive that into stock and it's then available for sale. So when we're asking you to account to tell us when stock has been received in, that's what we're doing is we're actually shifting it from goods ordered not received into goods available for sale. The third category is a little bit more rare and that's goods not available for sale. And this commonly comes up where you might be doing a product launch in three months time, you've got a new brand or a new line that you want to launch. You've ordered it, you've paid for it and you've received it, but you haven't put it into your inventory system yet. You haven't put it up onto your website, but it's in the warehouse. So we might account for it separately for a period on your balance sheet so that it can't be sold, but it's still accounted for as an asset of the business. When it's available for sale, we'll transfer it out of goods not available for sale to goods available for sale so that you can sell it as part of a, a product launch or a brand launch. Again, it just helps us keep that separate so that your cost of goods is accurately reflected in the profit and loss. Another category is raw materials, very much used in manufacturing. I'm not gonna to touch on that today. We'll do a future video around businesses that have uh, manufacturing raw materials and cost of goods manufactured. The last category I'm gonna to touch on is consumables. So if you're in a, in a retail business or an e-commerce business or a wholesale business where you have packaging, uh, whether that be retail or post packaging, you may have a lot of consumables where you buy it in bulk, where we still account for that on the balance sheet, you may be able to get a tax deduction for it and write it off immediately, but we still want to be able to account for it and keep track of it. Still track that on the balance sheet and expense it as you use it for management reporting. So that consumables might still be separately accounted for. Now, another common question we get is what makes up the cost of inventory? Now, the most common things that go into making up the cost of the, of the inventory in those categories is the actual cost of the item you've bought, the inbound freight, any customs duties you've paid, and any packaging that that item has, has come in or been repackaged into. So that's what will typically make up the cost of that item that's sitting on the shelf. Foreign exchange does play a part. We've previously done a video on the impact of foreign exchange on the cost of inventory and cost of goods. And we'll put a link in the blog to the video that we've previously done on that. Uh, it's definitely worth taking a look at because it does play a significant part around the timing of when you buy your goods. The last thing I'll touch on is the impact of obsolescence and write-offs of stock. So one of the things we encourage people to do is a regular stock take. If you're in an industry where you have a business where stock obsolescence is an issue, or uh, you have used by dates, or you have impacted by things like changing fashions or changing tastes, then understanding when you can write off stock or need to write down or discount stock and when we need to either take a provision or write that off through the profit and loss is really important. It's important that from an understanding of your own business and your own profit and loss, that we're always carrying the value of stock at its recoverable value. So having a good stock system uh, is, is critical. If you'd like to talk to us further about your inventory systems, uh, how putting better inventory systems in place, put better controls into your business and improve the profitability of your business, please don't hesitate to give us a call.